I'd like to try me out a life in the stars. My friends all say I need a place to air out my heart. So I. Hi, welcome to Artist Connection. This is a show where we talk to different artists about why they do what they do and why they like playing music. It's, uh, it's always a real journey going from starting out plinking away on your guitar or banging away on a piano in the living room or in your bedroom to actually wanting to perform on stage. And one of the big topics in that journey is, do you want to be in a band? Uh, is it better playing solo or is it better having a collaboration with different artists? And today we're going to talk to three different artists who will talk about that particular choice in their musical careers. We hope you like the show and we'll come back with a summary later on. Hi, we're here today with Roger Trott. He's a local musician here in Davis and he plays uh, acoustic music that sounds pretty darn good. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and you're in the Hay Nows today, yes, right? Yes, I am. Yeah. I, was, I was wondering, how, how did you get started in music? First off, and then I'd like to talk about how you went about forming a band. Okay. How, how did I get started? Well, um, I was living up in Reading at the time. I was a teenager, and uh, I taught myself how to play my brother's guitar. Mm. And so I was probably, I don't know, 14, 15 years old. And, um, of course, the na next natural thing that you do is you find friends that also play guitar, right? And yeah. so... Um, I mean, it's pretty much how my first band evolved was just uh, meeting people in school who also played and just getting together and start playing with them. And the next thing you know, you know, another guitar player and then you get a third guitar player and somebody's got to play bass, which is what I did. And then um, somebody knows a drummer and all of a sudden yeah. you know, you're playing music. And it's all pals in high school, right? Pretty much, pretty much. Yeah. And in some cases, it was weren't people who were necessarily friends. Um, before I started playing music with them, but you just somebody says, "Hey, so and so, you know, plays," and you know. At, the, at that point, it's kind of at the level where you just want someone who knows how to do at least four chords, right? Right. And then right. keep a steady right. four, four. Maybe beat. maybe one more chord than you know, so you're going to learn something. Right. You know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then and then at the end of high school, usually those things fracture apart when everyone goes to college. Is that kind of? It what didn't happened? happen in this case. Yeah. <laughs> this band got together, pro you know, probably when I was. Uh, First was forming probably when I was a sophomore in high school, and by junior we were starting to play out a little bit, playing high school dances kind of things, oh, yeah. and yeah. we ended up staying together. I ended up, uh, after high school, I went to college for a little while, still playing music with the same group of guys, and I quit college and we played. What was seriously. the name of the band? It's called Catalyst. Catalyst, Out okay. of Reading, and we played every yeah. podunk town in the whole vicinity of Reading, you know, Happy Camp to, sure. to Bernie to uh, Weaverville. Yeah. And that's where you're kind of learning your chops yep. and figuring out how to, because it, it, one of the challenges of having a band is, is making sure everything coordinates together. You get egos, you get different yep. timings. Were right. you kind of hashing that stuff? Well, out yeah. At that level? I mean, as the as the band went on, particularly as we got out of high school, you know, people had girlfriends and so forth, and you start getting those kind of issues start oh, creeping yeah. in the band, which are inevitable. Um, but also, we did get an agent, and we got booked um, when we were traveling. Like we played up in um, outside of Seattle, and we played in Port Angeles, up in Washington, and you start getting issues with people not liking to be away from home, right. you know, for very right. long, and so, and then people are starting to get, you know, they have part-time jobs and stuff, so it gets complicated. But So how long did the band last? We were probably together five years, maybe. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. which is a long time. And what kind of so, stuff did you play? At that point, it was uh, mid to getting late 70s it was pretty much covers it was rolling yeah. stones it was aerosmith it was led zeppelin you know it was everything uh, you can electrified, think of right. yeah yeah we were a real rock band and we played you know we played a lot of dances up in that area we played uh, clubs and uh you know parties and weddings and sure the whole shebang now, now the, the thing is today you do more of an acoustic based stuff yep. how did you 
migrate from that to this? That's, that's kind of a long story because yeah. between then and now, I mean, I think there were five other bands along the way. And five should, other bands. And I played bass in of most bands. of them. And yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, one of the bands, we played pretty, it was pretty grunge, alt, you know, rock, yeah. electrified. And after that, I don't know, I started, I've always been a songwriter and I've mm. always played my acoustic guitar. And actually when this band, kind of formed, I first came in as a bass player with two yeah. other guys, and one of the guys kind of dropped out. So the two of us who remained, we got together and just with our acoustic guitars to play each other's songs, and we started singing together, and we thought, well, this is kind of nice. You know, we can actually hear ourselves, you well, that's know? Kind of, that, that's kind of a nice organic formation of a band, it isn't is. it? Because a lot of times yeah. you go out and you'll, have, have, were any of those bands before the ones where you went out actively seeking uh, you know, we need a lead vocalist. Oh, I, or, yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's like that's almost like forming the monkeys, where you're yeah. constructing it, right? <clears throat> and sometimes that works, and sometimes that doesn't mm. work. You and know? when it doesn't work, how's that? Uh, you know, I mean, it can be awkward. Yeah, it can be hard. It can be awful. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you can. Yeah, it's it's hard. Yeah, well, it's kind of like dating. You know? Absolutely. But so when you're when you're you're trying to pick the people in a band like this, the current one now. Right. What, what kind of qualities do you need to make it work, to, to make it continue? What are you looking for in your bandmates? Well, you know, I mean, you're, you're thinking you want people who like the same kind of music you do. Sure. Right? Yeah. But, you know, it really doesn't turn out that way because a lot of times the way a band meshes, in my experience, is it's really a personality thing and it's what people are looking to get out of a band. And so it's sometimes it's not so much the style of music, even though you kind of, you know, you have to be okay with playing that style or whatever you're doing. Yeah. But uh, I think it's just, it, it's a really a feel thing. You feel when you're playing with somebody Absolutely. if it's working or not. Well, what do you want to, what, what do you want to get out of the band that, that works for you, that resonates with the other people in it? Well, I think in, in this case, I think um, a big thing for me is I, I like to play my songs, you know, and I like to play other people's songs too. But I mean, it's a great opportunity to play the songs I wrote. Um, yeah. It's a chance to go out and perform. Well, how do you gratifying? Absolutely, and 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 which you know, something you just said made made me think. How do you make sure that you have a balance between the stuff that you've written, the stuff that your bandmates have written, so that you don't get ego going on? Yeah, you know that's. I think it varies from bands to bands. In our case, I don't think any, any of us in the band are really the the lead singer kind of yeah. personality. I think we're more. We're all more that would almost rather stand back, you know, and let the others perform. So I think, uh, on the other hand, though, the two of us who write the songs in the band, we both like to do our songs. Because sure. It's really fun to do that. So we just try to make sure there's a balance. I mean, um, we do a stat list, and oftentimes we try to make sure there are eight of mine, there are eight of Lee Millhouse's mm -hmm. songs, and then we throw in some covers. And, and this is the Hay Nows, The right? Hay Nows, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Past bands, there have been definitely been friction between yeah. songwriters. Well, that's where the personality comes in that you were talking yeah. about. Because you need to yeah. be able to, to talk with your bandmates and not have an argument over, yeah. we well, always do that song of yours, no, let's do mine. Do yeah, I'm sure you've heard this you know, analogy, but it's like being married, right? Sure. you, you got to find yeah. the language that works to figure out how to how to uh, communicate with each other, <clears throat> sometimes not totally honestly, but you know, in a way that uh, greases the skids and keeps the band moving yeah, along. Sometimes the know. unsaid things are just as important yeah. as the said things. Yeah, huh? sometimes you have to learn not to say everything that's on yeah. your mind. Yeah. yeah. But it, now, it, it, playing solo is actually kind of easier in a way because you're sure. less set up, no, no issues over who's going to do what or anything right. like that. So why do a band instead of just doing your solo gigs? Well, you know, for me, I never, it never, really, never really went through my mind about playing solo because like I said, I'm not the, you know, out front type of personality generally with the band. So yeah. um, to get up there by myself, especially when I was starting out, it was just, it never entered my mind. I wouldn't have done it in a million years, you know? Uh, yeah. um, I think also with the band, I mean, when you're a songwriter, it's great to get up and do your own song. I mean, you can do it exactly the way you want to do it and everything. Sure. But with the band, it kind of opens the whole thing up. You get their, other people's interpretations of your songs, for better or for yeah. worse. It is, because you, know? you can, it can take your own song to a different place. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Somebody yeah. can add a harmony to it, and you're going, wow, that's really cool. Yeah. You know, or even really a different musical or melodic direction yeah. on it. Yeah, and sometimes the songs yeah. will speed up or slow down, or you know, they'll get rearranged or whatever. What know? happens when that doesn't work? Um, you know, 
Yeah, there was one band I was in, and the two of us were the writers, and um, our styles eventually just, we just learned they were just so different that it was really yeah. hard because I'd bring something in, and he, the other guy was the lead guitarist, and he would take it and it would make it sound like more like his style. Uh, yes. And, you know, yeah. and some of the things I thought that was really good, and then there are other things where I heard, say, I wanted to hear the jangle of the guitar, and I wasn't hearing that. I was hearing more heavier, riff-driven yeah. kind of stuff, so. Oh, that screwed up the chemistry. Yeah, Because yeah. yeah. when, when you're playing with the, the Hey Nows, I'm sure you're feeling where each other is going, and yeah. that can transmute into uh, the songwriting as well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, you think you're the songwriter, then you could bring it into a band, and it's actually you've got like five songwriters, you know, all of a sudden working on your song. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, sometimes it doesn't work, but, uh, you know, usually it does. So do you, uh, do you still do solo gigs in addition to the, uh, I don't. To the band? I don't. Yeah? I don't, no. No, I might. Maybe I will sometime, but I don't know. Is there a comfort factor to having your, your, your bandmates sure. around with yeah. you? Yeah, there's definite yeah. security to that. Yeah. yeah, we're like our little gang, you know. It's 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 cool. And now, who? How do you figure out who does the bookings and the you know the the fussy stuff? Yeah, that's been that's been a problem over the years with bands. Um, and this band, we've kind of traded it off uh, back and forth a little bit, and it kind of depends on who has um, contacts with various people sure. or clubs or something. Does anyone get irritated? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, if, if gigs aren't getting booked and somebody's looking at the other person saying, why aren't you booking gigs? And the person's saying, well, I'm busy, you know, I mean, so right. you get those kind of issues. I mean, this band, this band, you know, we play for the joy of playing, so it's not a growing business concern, right? But it puts a different uh, flavor yeah, to it, doesn't it? It, it does, but you, yeah. still, you still have some of the same issues where you have to get gigs because you want to go out and play, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Somebody's got to do the work. Yeah, but it takes a little bit of pressure off because you're not having to make a whole ton of money. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the money yeah. the money issue. Yeah, I've, I've gone through that. I did support myself for a while playing music. Yeah. And it does put more pressure on the situation. Oh, it makes you hungry. Yeah. Okay, yeah, well, I think what we're going to do now is we're going to hear you play a song, okay. one of your, uh, one of your uh, handwritten uh, compositions. Which one are you going to sing for us? It's called uh, Eva in the Bunker. Excellent. Yep. Thanks very much. It was okay. great talking with you. Eva, in the bunker, you look so nice and white. I hear the time is getting nearer for you to wed tonight. And all the bombs, when they stop dropping, well, it'll be all right Because the groom is getting restless He knows he's lost the fight Well, my Eva, I know it's not what you had planned I know it's not the dream you had I know In the bunker, you're feeling powerless To stop the troops from advancing You know it's such a mess And with Adolf in the next room He's ready to confess For his airiness Well, my Eva I know it's not what you had planned I know it's not the dream you had I know it's all that you can't stand Oh, no My Eva in the bunker I 
getting shorter Oh, for you I fear The honeymoon It can't last forever So you must make it dear Before the capsules Take your future They make you disappear Our next guest is Richie Lawrence. He plays with Richie Lawrence and the Yolos. They're based out of Sacramento, and they play Americana. Hi, we're talking today with Richie Lawrence, who plays with the Yolos and Richie Lawrence, and we're going to talk about how you form a band and why the heck you would form a band. Um, well, I know why you wouldn't form a band. That's uh, a there's, key a, question. there's a few reasons. <laughs> One, I think, is economic. Yeah, uh, that's clear. I've seen a lot of players lately. Uh, everybody from Elvis Costello to Bill Champlin, Al Cooper, a lot of people. A guy I play with Ray Bonneville who would love to have a band, but yeah. it's just economically uh, not feasible. You got to split the take. That's right. That's the so there's not enough dough to go yeah. around with touring is expensive, and uh, so such sure. as that. Uh, and then, um, uh, I don't know, having a band is great. I mean, I grew up in a time when everyone was in a band. So yeah. I think it has to do with where you come from, the type of music that you play, clearly. Uh, if you are playing, you know, uh, uh, older folk music, mm -hmm. you're a guitar player, you don't necessarily need a band, Delta Blues player, uh, you know, whatever the uh, well, that style and genre may be, you don't really require a band. But the sure, it's it's like when I, when I was a kid, the the, the singer songwriter genre, James Taylor, and and that type was coming up. And if you were going to get a band, you'd hire guys. Yeah. And then the, it's really you, but you'd hire guys to be a band. Being in an actual band as a unit is a different thing. And you've been in several different kind of genres of bands. Right now, as a singer songwriter, why wouldn't you just Hit the Wurlitzer yourself and uh, keep all the cash and do the dates. Um, because in, I think the bottom line is bands are really fun. They can be yeah. great and they can add to your sound and, and the, the whole is greater than the parts. Interesting. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of lonely, you know, to be the solo guy out sure. there. It has its ups and downs. Very flexible in a way. And yet uh, it's, you know, some of my best musical moments have been uh, in Congress with other players, just uh, those magic moments on stage. So to make that magic, you have to go out and find the right people. How do you go out to assemble? Say, say, let's talk about your 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 first big band that you you did a lot of touring uh, touring and playing with. Yeah. How did you assemble those people? Um, I always look for just players that are at least as good or better than I am. Uh -huh. That's where I start. So you can learn a little bit, maybe, sure. and they can certainly I mean, keep up. The, the better they are, the better, the more fun they are to play with, the yeah. better it makes me sound as a writer and a singer and a player. And as you say, I learn a lot. Sure, and uh, how, do you, how do you find guys like that, though? Uh, ask other players. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've been, I lived in LA for a long time, and you can go through the paper and other avenues. Uh, right. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think word of mouth. And uh, then you got to try them out. It's kind of like a date, right? Yeah. Or yeah. you go check them out or yeah, yeah. have some rehearsals or yeah. whatever. You ever had any terrible misfires? Um, well, not terrible. Yeah. Uh, you know, some people don't work out for various reasons. Uh, um, they come and go. 
Well, that's uh, the what's so. the. How do you tell someone you don't want them in your band anymore? Uh, I have been in the position of letting people go. It's yeah. not fun. Yeah. Uh, I don't do it lightly, um, and I'm just honest about whatever the situation is. Uh, now, now for the, you were in polka bands, right? I was in a what's polka the, band. What's the difference between forming a polka band and say the the, the cowboy music band you were yeah. in? Um, I think I was in the beginning hired by both. Yeah. Um, and again, I think there's no difference. Uh, it's really uh, as that person was looking, the leaders of those bands were looking for players that uh, you know were as good as be or better than they are. They're just looking for good yeah. players that they can relate to. And yeah. so I think I don't. I think that doesn't have anything to do with genre. Yeah. Yeah, and, and then how long do you think, what do you think the life cycle of a band is, well, having been in many? It seems to be about 10 years if you're really lucky. Uh, uh, yeah, anywhere from yeah. a month to 10 years. And in the, in the in a month to 10 years, in, in the course of that, how do you figure out who's, it did, uh, uh, some people like to have it be a, a tribal thing where no one's really in charge. Do you think it's better to have someone in charge of the band or just to have a, a group think? It is not on? a democracy. It is no. not a democracy, no. Who's it's the, who's a, the a czar? It's a dictatorship. Is, are you whoever, the czar in your bands? I am the czar. Yeah, yeah. So, and, so uh, how, do, how do you keep peace among the, the proletariats as you, as you run this thing? Um, well, it's just common sense. Yeah. You know, I mean, they're good people. They're great players. I'm very lucky to have both in my current band, the YOLOs. Yeah. Uh, they're all very talented, and uh, so it's just listening and exchange and communication. And why is it good to have someone in charge? I mean, I kind of have some ideas, but what, uh, tell me about what, what works for that. Well, I don't know. In a band situation, it's just, it, I just have never found it to work uh, well when everyone has an, has an absolute equal say in what happens. So what goes um, wrong? What kind of thing? Can you think of an example of something that, it's just that slow, can go wrong? It just slows everything down. There's just too many directions and too many, too much. Because people thought. have, they want different kinds of songs and they different sure. kinds of set lists. And, and, and that's great. And that's why you have yeah. uh, other players, great players there, because they have opinion and they have talent. But in uh, the end... It, but yeah. somebody has to, you know, it's just too, too big a task to... Uh, to let everybody run the show. Is that so you can keep the band going in the same direction and keep sure. a musical integrity going yeah. on? And you know, I started it. It's my vision, generally. Yeah. And uh, again, that's not to say that you ignore, uh, you know, the players that you want to work with and, sure. and respect. So uh, you know, you listen and you, but you make the choices. And how do you figure out who does the uh, the scut work? Uh, bookings, the handling the money, uh, yeah. the, the, the uh, equipment, that kind of thing. Yeah, I think that comes down to economics. If you can afford it, you hire sure. the best people you can, yeah. uh, you can afford it. And if you can't afford it, you do it yourself. But then if you're in charge of the band and you've got the roadies, you've got, to, you've got an extra responsibility, right? Or can you assign that to someone else in the band? Um, well, uh, I don't know. You're, you, you run the show, so I mean, it's like you managing the manager. If you have somebody else overseeing some part, you're still overseeing them. And so, who gets paid the most? Uh, the czar, well, right? At my level, no one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that, you know, I mean, it, you, there are different levels. Yeah, and so if yeah. you're working clubs and, and it's, uh, you know, if there's not that much dough to go around, it's just not right to take some huge share for yeah. for not very little. Because in the end, it, it's it's it, forming a band. It, it it sounds like one of the things that drives you, like many musicians, is you're forming a band because you really love doing the music and you want to be around people who also love it. Of course. It's, how do you balance that off against the idea that this has to sometimes be a business enterprise? Uh, uh, what's the What's the, what's the balance you reach in there? Um, well, if I knew that, I would have done it already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm not sure uh, exactly. Um, I don't know. I don't yeah. know the answer to that. Well, when you first started playing music, 
when did it first occur to you, hey, I think I should be in a band instead of just plinking away in my bedroom? Um, trying to think of the first time that happened. Uh, it's just knowing other people who play and getting together. And oh, it's just a, kind of organically happens. And you're probably pretty young, right? The high school thing where your buddies, young. hey, you play guitar too? Yeah. It's, is, is that how? It, now, it, it, when you're a kid, that, that kind of forms that way because you're in a group all day at, at school. Later on, when you're not going to school all the time, uh, how do you go, it, it, is, is it easier, was it easier in high school or easier out in the real world where you're actually playing and watching and, and checking out other players? To find other players? Yeah, yeah. Um, Well, it gets more challenging because you, you become more discerning and you, you yeah. want a certain type of player and somebody that you can relate to personally. Uh, yeah. So, you know, it perhaps takes a little more time. I mean, if you're new to a community, that's a whole bag of worms, a, a challenge. Do you ever actually just Craigslist it? Uh, yeah, or in the mm. newspaper or, you know, whatever ads you can try to come up with. Uh, and the longer you're, you are someplace uh, or have been in a lot of places, uh, again, word of mouth is the way to go. Because there is a musician community, and then within the community you can find, it's almost like being in a giant dating pool. <laughs> yeah, so, sort of like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big date. <laughs> what do you like about the current band you're in? Love the current band I'm in. Uh, I think I, I was able to find players that are at least as good or better than I am. They're yeah. beautiful people. I can communicate with them. Um, uh, and uh, they're all very talented. And uh, so uh, the Yolos is my band. And do they help songwrite with you? Um, certainly arrangement. Yeah. Uh, at this point, I'm pretty much writing. My wife, Katie, is in the band. She's oh, a wonderful that's handy. singer. That is extremely handy. Yeah. Uh, we rehearse any time we want. Uh, and uh, she will uh, she will add to my writing. Uh, that's terrific. But in general, everybody is always throwing in two cents for arrangement and the like. Good. Well, I understand now we're going to have you uh, play one of your great songs. Ah, all right. Thank I'll you very happy much. Happy to do that. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Yeah, thank you. All right. All right. Yep. Lay down across the tracks ahead. Lay down. He is surely dead, O oh, death. Release this painful mind. Lay down across the tracks of time. Maybe the way too great, too bad, to care, to talk, to make a stand, to understand the complex truth, to what may be, or what to do. Lay down. Perhaps born a little too soon before her time. Perhaps born a little too late, step behind. Out of place or out of mind. Easier across the tracks of time. whistle blowing across the trestle bearing down the line lay down there'll be no more suffering easier across the tracks of time lay down trespassing out on this line there'll be no fault may be a fine for the trespasser who has a mind 
across the tracks of time, lay down across the tracks ahead, lay down. He is surely dead, O oh, death. Release this painful mind, lay down across the tracks of time, lay down, lay down. Lay down across the tracks of time. Lay down. Lay down across the tracks of time. Our next guest is Kari King. She's based in Winters and plays with the Bonanza King, and they do Western swing music. Hi, we're here today with Kari King of the Bonanza Kings, and we're talking about why you form a band and uh, what you get out of doing that. Big questions. Yeah, do you, do you, first off, when you started out, uh, I understand you were in the sticks. And there weren't a lot of people around to form bands with. Well, actually not. When I started out, I was in Oakland and Berkeley. Oh, really little, um, yeah, And sure. there were bands all around mm -hmm. me, um, but I wasn't in any of them. Right. Um, I later ended up doing a lot of solo work when, when my family moved up to the mountains. Yeah, yeah. And when you were doing the solo work, it, it can sometimes be easier just playing by yourself. There's no one to coordinate with. He's, you know, not, not well, a whole lot of setup. I didn't have much choice, really, yeah. because I was the only one I knew that played an instrument or sang, and uh, I was the only one I knew pretty much in the evenings that wasn't drunk. So, <laughs> 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 so it gave me something to do. I was very shy, and um, you would think of performers as being really outgoing, but I was actually yeah. very shy, and it gave yeah. me something to do that was a little easier for me than to be walking around talking to people. So what, what was the, the first inkling you had in your head that you really wanted to have a band going on? Well, when I was really little, my stepdad um, is a drummer and yeah. played in jazz, uh, mm -hmm. all kinds of jazz combos all through my life. And I really wanted to be one of those glamorous um, women with the long dress and the, the chord that I could flip around right. and be yeah. a jazz singer. So yeah. that's what I thought I'd grow up and get to be in his band when I was little. Yeah. I would fantasize about that. And for that, you need, were you thinking giant band or a four piece? What, oh, what the was bigger the idea? better. Really? Right? Like horns all back behind you. Oh, and no yeah, good. yeah. Now, assembling a, a a unit like that can take a lot of work. How, how do you go about assembling a band? Well, you know, it's funny because in the early days, I pretty much, um, it was who picked me, mm. really. Yeah. Um, I don't think I had a lot of confidence with other musicians. I was pretty confident as a solo artist. Yeah. Um, but then I started really enjoying the feeling of having those people around me and having all that backup. Um, and so a lot of people started asking me to sing with them, and I started doing that. Um, really? But I didn't really have the, the confidence to ask other people to be in my band at that point. So it was point. like high school uh, boyfriend-girlfriend relationships? You're just kind of bouncing into whoever's available at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> well, I hadn't thought of it like that, but now yeah. that you, it sounds kind of cheap, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did, at what point did you narrow it in so that you were, uh, you were getting into something that you really felt confident in? Well, you know, I was in a, a lot of bands um, where people asked me that I was thrilled to be in their band, um, but I didn't actually ask my own musicians and form my own band until this, this band that I'm the in Bonanza now, Bonanza Kings. King. So a few years ago was the first time I actually did that. So what did you do? Did you go on Craigslist and uh, you know, start picking them or how did you assemble it? Well, what it was, was it was a benefit that, that someone asked me to do. Yeah. And I thought, well, I'm kind of old. I might as well just ask <laughs> everybody that's my favorite musician uh -huh. because what the heck, I'm not, I don't care that much, I'm older now, you know, so I just asked everybody who I loved thinking, oh, they're all going to say no and I'll just go yeah. to my second choice or my third choice. Every one of them said yes. No kidding. How many people did you wind up, you know, pulling together for this crew? Well, there's been a couple of minor staff changes mm -hmm. um, through the times, so we have five now. Yeah. Five. And did, did you have uh, troubles of liking three different guitarists who uh, but you couldn't have all of them in the band how do you how do you pick well um it's been an interesting thing because because it was my first band i thought a lot about that yeah um but what i really learned is that um the combination of personalities and the love for the music 
is the most important thing for us. So, so if you have a really hot lead guitarist, but he's kind of a, you know, an a-hole, uh, it's better to go with one who's just has a few, few fewer licks, but is better to get along with. It's true. And, about? you know, when we have actually interviewed a couple people for, you yeah. know, times where we had to get a fill in or something, and um, what I've said time and time again is if they don't love the music, they're probably yeah. not for us yeah. because it's just not there. So who's in charge of the band? You? Well, it was interesting um, listening to other people talk about um, about how who's in charge. Yeah. Um, because I'm I'm often told by other band leaders that I need to be more in charge, um, but I I take a different approach and I kind of um, listen to everybody. Yeah. And we try to come to consensus, and it is a little bit slower. Why would they? Why do these other people tell you that you should be more in charge? Um, well, I think that might be a more male perspective. I don't want to be. No, um, I could see that. That's because I feel like what we get it is slower, but I feel like it's richer um, because what I have is the best of everybody. So we take we take everybody's ideas and kind of let them percolate and gestate. And since we are all really good-hearted people that want the best for our band, we come to consensus that I think is what's best, and you we know, come up with the music that's really you know part of all of us. That is a more traditionally womanly collaborative. So, way of going and that makes it. me just feel good, and I just yeah. that's a necessity for me is to when I have people all around me, I need to feel good about them and, and us and what we're creating. Mm. And do you still have the impulse to do solo shows that uh, to streamline things? Does it feel like you're getting rid of baggage, or does it feel like you're you're being uh, uh, unassisted and, and alone? Well, I'm really lucky because I have my husband doing sound for almost all the gigs. Yeah. So, um, and um, he's there, kind of handing me things, and you know, I guess I need a handler. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't really feel the burden of the people, and I feel more supported by them than I do infringed upon. So when I'm by myself, I feel a little bit more kind of exposed. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, so I enjoy the band work, but I solo is really fun too. Now for songwriting, uh, how, how do you like the, the band setting for songwriting? Is this something you just do in your living room, or do you want to throw it out to the group? Um, well, we... I mostly have done it by myself, and then yeah. arrangements for sure. Everybody helps with. Um, they all adding, toss in and adding help their out. piece, helping with rhythms, and um, yeah. definitely fleshing out the the music to make it better. But the ideas and the lyrics and the melody are are pretty much. Does it feel like you're bringing it to the family when you've once you've written it? They're and, so encouraging. Yeah. So it makes it really safe. Oh, that is nice. It's yeah. really nice, yeah. How long has the band been together? Only three years, but I've known everybody for yeah. much longer than that. Uh, a few folks have mentioned uh, how long they think the life cycle of a band is. What do you think? Gee, I'd like to see if we can push the 10-year limit that Richie was talking yeah. about, but I don't know yet, you know? <laughs> it remains to be seen. What, what, how, how long did your other bands last? I haven't really... Like a, um, I think I've been towards the like three years. I'm at the end yeah. of the, um, but I haven't ever felt like I've been creatively this enriched as we are now. I feel like we're just starting to really um, get it going, so it's and exciting. What do you find is the, the the major thing that causes a band to fall apart in your experience? I think that maybe people pick people that they think are the hottest players. Yeah, and they may not be the best mix. Uh, Personality-wise, there's a lot of egos in music. Yeah. You know, we have a we Go have, we figure. have huge <laughs> ego needs. So yeah. you want people that are able to somehow manage that together, however yeah. they, however it is that they do it. How do you manage your own ego, being the leader of your band? I try to check myself a lot. Yeah. And just laugh. I laugh at myself a lot when I catch it, and I, mostly I just admit it. Like I'll go, oh. So I even wrote a song about uh, my, my band cheating on me. Oh. Because I would look in the paper and see, you know, oh my gosh, he's playing, he's playing over, the, I didn't even know about that, and he didn't invite me, and I could be sitting in. And I caught myself doing that, so I yeah. wrote a song about my band cheating on me, because we all go through that. And that's, that's one thing, I, in, in a band, isn't it uh, kind of helpful sometimes to have the band's, band members doing other things, because then they bring back more... Uh, what lifeblood or, or energy or how would you how would you put it? Well, I don't know. I'd kind of like everybody to just be in my band, but really, I, you know, really, I would well, just like them Well, you got your husband in the band, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't have, you know, they don't have that um, ability to keep me just in their band, or you know, it's just not the way. Most bands just aren't doing that anymore. It seems like 
um, especially the guys that need to make a living. Yeah, yeah. And now when it comes to that, how do you choose who has to handle the financing and the booking? And that we're kind of still stuff? working that out because I feel like as, yeah. at three years, we're pretty young. Um, and that has held us back a bit because sometimes we just are all so busy we don't have time to do things. Yeah, and in, um, and in a collaborative band like you're like you're describing, uh, uh, do you ever? How do you handle snits? Like, oh, I don't have time to do the bookings this week. Uh, why don't you do it? Uh, what, do you get that kind of conflict going on sometimes? Well, it's been mostly me, but yeah. then um, the guys have taken on projects. For instance, our guitar player, Cedar Seeger, has put together some really nice tours. We'll be up in Nevada City, yeah. um, I think, in May, and yeah. did a tour in Oregon last summer that was really nice. So he kind of does these little projects, which are great. Um, and then our other other members have connections with people, and you know, everybody does their part. Did you assign them, or did they just say, hey, I got this thing going on? They did it, yeah. yeah. Again, that's, that's part of the personality. The people, yeah. yeah it's I guess the if they don't, they'd be up. Sure. <laughs> no, they wouldn't be. <laughs> Now, what's it like having a husband in the band? You got to go home, and if things didn't go so well, do you chew on each other, or do you just leave it at the uh, at the stage? Well, you know, it usually goes relatively well. So yeah. I think we usually have a better time than we think we're going to have. So the problems usually are before, you oh. know, where you're late, or you can't get the sound done, or an amplifier's not working, yeah. or something like that. So, yeah. so far, when we're done, we're usually good. Yeah, so. and it's... It, 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 it's interesting in a, in a band setting, which, like you've described, it's kind of like a family collaboration, but there's also a professional uh, element that has to be plugged in there. Where right. People have to hold up their end. It's true, but we get along really well, and I somehow managed to choose well. Oh, well, that's terrific. So. Well, I understand we have a song today that you would like to share with us. Sure, yeah. I'd love to hear it. Thank you for being here. Thank you. All right. My guitar was my companion when I left my home when I was 17. I spent the night on beaches and in cities and in everywhere between. If I'd have listened to it better, I'd have never let him drive. My best friend and my brother spent the summer playing house, and so did I. Just sitting by the river, drinking beer and watching loggers wasting time. Well, Bud Weiser took my brother and my lover, but my best friend don't live far. cracks on my guitar So I hitched a ride from Berkeley and I dropped into the Sacramento scene And I danced away the evening and I sang Played my guitar in between When I married the bass player Well, the blues became two shiny little stars And I know it don't look pretty But you can read between the lines And see the stories in the cracks on my guitar Well, I am standing in meadow halfway down this mountain path that I am on I've been taking me a breather but now it's time to get back up and get on going oh yeah my guitar is here beside me it will stay right here to guide me like a star and I know it don't look pretty but you can read between the lines and see the stories in the cracks on my guitar. Well, I know it don't look pretty, but you can read between the lines and see the stories. You'll see the faces. You'll see
20 the years in the cracks on my guitar. So what did we learn from these three California artists? We learned that it can be really nice being a solo artist, but they like being in bands. Uh, being in a band gives you a family atmosphere. You get someone to collaborate with, someone else who gets to help you sort out the trouble on the finances, the bookings, uh, who's going to do what, who's going to do it where. And it's just a comforting environment, being in a collaborative effort with other people who also love what you do. You have to pick carefully. You can't just drag anyone into the band because they're a hot guitarist. It has to be someone that you actually want to work with. Uh, but in the end, that does seem to trump just being a solo artist. Now, thanks for joining us today, and we hope you join us next time for the next Artist Connection. Mm -hmm.